Hello and welcome to Clan Macad. Today we're going to look at what I would consider to be the best way to introduce yourself into engineering drawing. We're going to cover the reasons why we draw the way we draw in engineering and begin by discussing the alternative. The alternative to orthographic projection, which is the way we draw in engineering, is perspective. Perspective is a term used by both artists and draftsmen for representing on a 2D plane, whether that be a piece of paper or a monitor screen, the way we perceive depth when observing the real world from the human eye. More specifically, it refers to the deformation of shapes and their sizes depending on the distance and relative angle of the viewer. Using this skyscraper as an example, you can clearly see that despite the front face and the left side being exactly the same size with exactly the same number of windows, the front face is rather large and wide, and the left side is narrow by comparison because we're viewing it from such a shallow angle. Furthermore, you can see that the bottom edge of the left side almost looks like it's travelling uphill due to the angle we're viewing it from. Now if we look up, the whole building despite being square appears to get narrower the higher it goes and the floors and their windows appear to get smaller and more frequent the further away they get from our position. Another example of perspective can be seen if we have a quick look down one of the corridors in the skyscraper. As you can see, as we look down the corridor, once again, despite being the same size all the way down, it appears to narrow the further down we look. The doors at either side become more frequent and smaller, just like the windows and floors on the external view, and despite the corners of the walls being completely parallel to each other, because all the walls are the same height, the floors are the same level, they appear to be converging, and the further down the corridor they go, the closer they all seem to be together, despite again being the exact same distance apart all the way down. Now, while this is great for showing off things to clients that, you know, want to see it as it would look in the real world and don't particularly want to look at engineering drawings all day, it isn't particularly helpful from an engineering and manufacturing point of view as we want to objectively and definitively show the size and shape of any given object or assembly of objects. Furthermore, any objects that are exactly the same shape and size as others in the scene should be obviously so no matter what their position is and no matter what their distance is. Now before we have a look at orthographic projection, let's first explore what the cause of these distortions and changes in shape and size are when we view from a human eye. This way it will help us better understand the solution and why the solution works. Okay, so for this, let's dim the lights. So when you're viewing the world with a human eye, light is obviously coming from a rather large field of view around the eye which means it's actually converging into a fixed point from a much larger space. We're going to represent that with these two blue lines, which represent our maximum field of view, and we're just doing this at a side-on angle just now. So I'm going to add two more lines, which represent us looking at this box in front of us just now, a red one for the top and a green one for the bottom. So at this proximity to the eye, the red and green line are taking up quite a large portion of our maximum field of view. Anything beyond that, if the material isn't transparent, is completely obscured. However, when we move the box away, the red and green line are effectively taking up a much smaller portion of our field of view, and therefore the object, as it gets further away, gets smaller. And this is all because all the light information is converging in on a point at your eye. So something the same size close up takes up a larger portion of the cone, and something further away takes up a smaller portion. So that explains the distance. So let's move on to an example where we're going to explain the reason why two faces of the same size appear different at different angles. So here we are again with a larger box, and what I'm going to do is draw three lines this time, still red and green for the top middle and bottom middle of the front face, but a yellow one for the back top middle. So once again you can quite clearly just read between the lines and see that between the red and the green there's a much larger portion of our vision being dedicated to viewing that surface whereas between the red and the yellow, there's a much slimmer gap, which is the reason why that surface, despite being the same size, is effectively squished. The technical term for a surface being shortened like this is foreshortened. Now that you've hopefully got a good grasp on perspective, let's move on to orthographic projection. Using this little box here, what we're going to do is not converge the information onto a fixed point like the eye, we're actually going to put it onto a flat surface like a piece of paper or a computer monitor. So what we're going to do is take the same 
colour scheme on the lines as we did in the previous example. Red for the top surface, green for the bottom, and yellow for the back top, just as an additional example of depth. So, by projecting all of the corners onto the paper, what we're going to do is actually project them in parallel. So from an object to flat surface relationship, meaning no light is converging, meaning there's no distortion. So as you can clearly see, the only thing that is visible to the paper is just a square, because the yellow back surface is obscured by the red, because it's perfectly in parallel. So therefore, the only way that the yellow back edge there of the cube would show up is if it was slightly higher, or if it was slightly lower, and we were going to include hidden detail, which we're not going to go into in this video, but I'll do a separate one dedicated to explaining the concept of hidden detail. Now let's add one more little section onto this cube, just to make it more interesting, and to call out one of the problems we had with perspective, was that when things were further away, they got smaller and distorted. So with this extra section that stepped back from the front surface, will there be a change? Well, in perspective, as you can see, if we go in a bit closer, the back surface, the step back, does actually become smaller. It looks smaller at the top and the bottom when you're really up close to it. But if we turn it back around and project the corners of this surface, you'll see that because we're doing it in parallel, no matter how far back this object is, including the setback, it's always going to be the same size in the paper because we're projecting in parallel. So for my final example in this video, I've got a little handy light tool that only fires light in parallel, so I can illuminate exactly what we can draw on this little mechanical component. So for this one, we're going to have to turn the lights right the way down. Okay, so, ignoring the little blemishes and reflections on the floor, any surface that you can see that is illuminated must have its outline drawn, and then any changes in direction or corners or edges must also be filled in in between. So, all the surfaces you currently see that are nice and bright, those are what you would see as a front view. Again, all of the sides, the sides of the holes in the inside, all of that are completely parallel, so they don't actually show up. And when I bring up drawing changes in direction, obviously certain features of this component are constantly changing direction, and those would be the cylinder, the dome, and the internal surfaces of the holes. Now, as long as the change in direction is consistently changing the same way, you don't draw it in. So it's all well and good me showing you this example in 3D. Might help some people, might not others. So let's quickly make sure we translate it to 2D so that you can get exactly what I'm referring to. And the quick trick I can do here is bring up a piece of paper behind it so that the shadow that's left is the profile of your orthographic projected drawing. It will be exactly the same size and proportions, because remember this light is only fired in parallel rays. So the shadow is the absolute same size as the object here. So all we need to do now is turn the lights back on and make sure we've added in all the outlines and the changes in direction. And that would look something like this. Now if you want to learn how to project various views of the same object, I suggest you go on to my third angle and first angle videos, which you'll find in the same playlist as this video. Thanks very much for watching, I hope this helped, and I'll see you next time.